Ball first. All right, let's throw. Incomplete looking for Richard Rodgers. It was a five-yard penalty on Seattle before the first snap. Second down. Greg Ward off target. Jalen Rieger. No. This is really the story of the, of the evening. Minus four yards for the Eagles in the first quarter. Not very good. Okay. We start the second quarter still scoreless, and Jalen Hurts is on the field. And you're thinking, have they made a switch? No. Comes in. That was the first snap all year where Wentz was on the sideline. Completes it to Alshon Jeffrey, and Hurts back to the bench. It's third and eight, and this is as much of the story as well. Wentz under pressure, as he's been all year with the O-line struggles. Eagles forced to punt. You're not going to keep Wilson and DK Metcalf down all day. Wilson, beautiful deep ball. Metcalf down just shy of the end zone. Later in the drive, it's second and goal. Wilson, David Moore, corner of the end zone. Perfect pass and throw. Seattle takes a 7 to nothing lead. Next Seattle drive. Second and goal. A penalty backs him up. Chris Carson bullies his way through the Philadelphia defense. I don't know if anybody runs any harder than him in the NFL. Mm. Carson back from injury and back in the end zone. Seattle leads 14 to nothing. But late in the second, after the two-minute warning, a really good third down call given the struggles off offensive line-wise. Let the rush get past you and run up field. First down, Philly. And second and goal. Pumps to Ward. Complete to Dallas Goddard. Three-yard touchdown. Eagles missed the extra point. It's a one-score game. Still a one-score game. 17-9, which the last two times these teams played is where the game ended. Fourth and two. They go for it. Pass is knocked down by K.J. Wright. Ensuing drive. Wilson. Metcalf, what a grab. I don't know what Darius Slay is supposed to do. Seattle would have to settle for a field goal. It's 20 to nine. Ensuing drive for the Eagles. Down there close, Wentz overthrows Goddard. Then looking for the rookie. Jalen Rieger, just beyond his reach. Doug Peterson decides to go for it on fourth down. You're down two scores. Pass on the field goal, and Wentz throws it right to Quandre Diggs. Later, he would complete a pass. That was of great interest to many of you. And as a result, it's a six-point road win. Six-point. The let Russ Cook movement in full effect. It eclipses 3,000 yards Monday with five games to spare. He's now reached that mark in all nine of his seasons, breaking a tie with Cam Newton for the second longest streak to begin a career in National Football League history. Peyton Manning did so in each of his first 13 seasons. Time now for our T-Mobile post-game coverage. Lisa Salters with Russell Wilson. Russell, another primetime game, another win for you. You are the winningest quarterback in primetime in league history. Just what's your secret under the lights? Oh, man. Um, I think just staying poised. I think uh, just believing and, and uh, always being prepared. I believe in being prepared. Um, I believe our football team was prepared. Uh, we're playing championship football. We got through uh, some tough times. We also do doing a great job all season. Um, you know, our defense really stepped up uh, the past few games. It looked unbelievable. Carlos Dunlap's a big pickup for us. Jamal Adams has been unbelievable. Diggs, Bobby Wagner's as good as it gets. I don't know if there's been ever a better linebacker. There's been some good ones, and uh, that's a big comment. But, uh, you know, I'm just grateful for our guys. DK Metcalf made some great plays today. He got a lot of catches. Tyler special. Um, guys ran the ball really well. We had that holding call. We could have been another touchdown. We had a couple big plays that could have been there, too, as well, to really break the game open. But uh, we kept battling. We, we did it together. And that's what, uh, that's what championship teams do. And so... I just, I just love playing. I, I love being prepared. I love, I love winning, and I love the process more than, than, than the end result. Let, let's talk about this kid. All right, we welcome in Lewis Riddick and Brian Greasy. And, uh, fellas, it's a workmanlike game from Seattle. I, I guess DK Metcalf's the one guy that just jumps off the screen, had 177 yards, which until the very end was more than everybody else in the field combined. And, and Lewis, I'll just start with you as a guy who used to make his living trying to slow guys like that down. When you look at him, what are you seeing? <laughs> I'm seeing a problem. 
And I think Darius Slay saw a problem tonight, too. When you have that kind of size, speed, strength, rapport with your quarterback, it's tough to defend, Scotty, especially when you're one-on-one -on -one all night long, like Darius Slay was tonight for the most part, because that's how Jim Schwartz likes to call the game. And Darius Slay's paid a lot of money, and they expect him to be able to match up against guys like this and, and be able to control them to some degree and not have them go off on you. You saw Jalen Ramsey do it. So he expected Darius Slay to have a little bit better of, a, of an outing than he did tonight. But for DK Metcalf and for the Seattle Seahawks fan and that, fans in that organization, they've got to sell something between him and Russell Wilson that's going to be here to stay. Speaking of problems, Brian, I, I didn't want to start the conversation here with the losing quarterback, but I feel like that is the overarching conversation that comes out of watching this game. You got a guy in Carson Wentz, and you all were right to point out, it's not that many years ago he's out in the Coliseum and he's cooking, man. It was, it was, it was Carson that was cooking, right, with, with Philadelphia before that knee injury. But you pay him $128 million. I know the O-line's a mess, and you guys spent a lot of time in the back end of the game talking about it. But even when he's got time, He's off target. I just, as a guy, Brian, who played that position, what is it that you see and don't see from Carson Wentz right now? I think it's a confidence issue, Scott. You know, and I think it's, it's, it's an accumulation of a lot of bad outings for not just Carson, but for this offense in general. And everybody just wants to bypass the offensive line. I don't. I'm sorry. Like, if you don't have time to sit back there in the pocket, then it begins to affect you. And even when you do have a clean pocket then, Scott, you're wondering, am I going to get hit in the back because I have you know, a guy in Jordan Mailata that's playing left tackle that's only started five games. Uh, so it begins to creep into your head. And then the play calling starts to get conservative. So it's, it's yes, Carson Wentz needs to play better. Doug Peterson needs to coach better. The offensive line needs to play better. The, the management and the front office here in Philadelphia need to get better talent around Carson Wentz. I still believe in Carson Wentz, and you, you might mock me for that. I think he's a good quarterback. He's proven that he can be a good quarterback when you have the pieces around him. No, not at all. And, and what you, you're, 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 I get it. And, again, you, you played that position, so you'd know better than anyone how, how troubling it can be to have an O-line in front of you that, that is not able to keep you kind of upright. But I just feel like you're seeing misses uh, when he's got a clean yeah. pocket, and, and, and the confidence speaks to that. It would make sense to me. And I just wonder, Lewis, that, and you know that town so well, you know, because you're still kind of in it in theory, but you're not in it if this is how you're going to play. You know what I'm saying? So I just wonder, and, and you made it the point during the game, what are you supposed to do? I'm not saying that, that uh, making a switch at quarterback gives you a better uh, option to win. I just wonder if if they're kind of boxed in by the money and the situation, Lewis? Yeah, they're, they're boxed in by both. You're right. You're kind of in purgatory as far as your seasons is concerned. You would like to st figure out what you have for the, in the future as far as Jalen Hurts is concerned because you drafted him in the second round, right? So you start thinking along those lines from a long-term perspective. The short term says we still have a chance to win a division if somehow we can get ourselves together here and win a few games. So what that usually leaves you is right down the middle where they are right now, which is you have a little bit of hope, but you also know we have a lot of work to do. And that's where the fans, Scotty, get absolutely fed up because you know what? They're at this point.